Hi all, Bill Greenberg with PhoneScholar.com. Today is Sunday, actually, July 4th, 2010. Happy July 4th, happy birthday, America. Once again, thank you for all of you fighting so we could, uh, overseas and abroad, so we can uh, actually, and all of those that have fought, so we can have America's birthday. We do really do appreciate that. I'm wearing my red. Uh, I don't have anything blue, and I'm one of the whitest guys on the planet, so maybe that, that'll work for you. Anyway, here's a brief uh, summary of what's on the website today. Sorry. <laughs> Verizon may sell 12 million iPhones after AT&T exclusive ends. It looks like it's been announced. It's 100% that the Verizon phones come in in January. Okay. Again, please don't hold your breath. Please, these things do tend to get backed up so many times. There's been so many rumors with this, but with this one looks like it's pretty, pretty, pretty close. Uh, there's a video link that I put on there. Unfortunately, for some reason, it wouldn't allow me to put the actual video, so I put a link for the video. Now, it gets kind of stocky, meaning they talk about stock prices and stuff like that, so if you're not into that, but it does give an explanation from two huge experts in the field about what the uh, what the merger will be, or excuse me, what selling the phone will be, and doing stuff like that. So, uh, the exclusivity will end. Uh, they won't, now remember, out of those 12 million people, it's not meaning that they're going to add all these new apps because a lot of people are going to switch over, a lot of people are going to change. You may lose a lot of AT&T customers, but I don't think a significant amount. Um, and that is 12 million over the next year. Uh, now the advantage is obviously they're going to be going to a faster network, but the huge advantage for Apple, they finally figured out, is that when Verizon rolls out its 4G network, it's LTE, it's actually going to be, that's GSM based, and I'm sorry I'm getting a little technical, but the long and short of it is, Apple will be able to have one version of the phone. But when they first put it out, they're going to have to have two different technologies. The CDMA that Verizon uses, which is their over-the-air network, their network is CDMA, and AT&T uses GSM. So if you're not sure, if you need explanations of that, write me and I'll tell you about that. Okay, Amazon Kindle DX re-enters the ring, and Amazon has re-entered, it has re it brought out, reintroduced its Kindle DX, which is a larger version of the Kindle. They brought it down from 489 to 379. It came out with a brighter screen. It's not a color screen because they still feel that the color screen is still not as readable as the e-ink brighter screen that they use. So they're working on a color screen, but they didn't think it's going to be that. It's that important. Um, it's similar to the size, it's close to the size of the iPad. So check out the article. It has some really nice features on it. Kin is dead. It's in little less than two months since the Kin was introduced for Microsoft and Verizon. Kin, uh, Microsoft has pulled the plug. In all my years in retail, this is the first time I've ever seen a phone with this much hype pulled that quickly. I think it's an intelligent idea if it's not selling. Supposedly they sold 10,000 units in the little over two months at, in 60 days as opposed to if you look, look at the iPhone 4, 1.7 million in three days. So uh, I think it was a very good idea. There, in the article it tells what went wrong um, the interesting thing uh, is that they're now going hot and heavy on the Windows Phone 7, which I, you know, I, I don't wish anybody ill will, but boy, I'm telling you, they're going to have to do a lot to keep up with what Android and iPhone is doing, and even RIM. So good luck to Microsoft. Uh, I think they have a long way, a, long, a hard fight ahead of them. And then uh, finally, T-Mobile to halt the mobile, the, excuse me, T-Mobile to halt the Sidekick sales. And for those of you that read, remember, the Sidekick was made most famous a number of years ago when Paris Hilton lost her sidekick with all her celebrity contacts on it. Um, now remember the sidekick was one of the very first phones to incorporate web browsing, instant messaging, email, text messaging, and a phone in one device. So it was a really revolutionary thing at the time. It was also one of the first ones that you could flip up the thing and do two-thumbing texting. So it was very inventive at the time. I remember when I was selling them. Uh, when they first came out, most of the time, a lot of times they would go through huge outages of stock because they were so popular. Um, and it was a terrific little phone at the time, but of course, like most pioneering units in technology, it's just been surpassed. Uh, they have said that they are going to keep kind of the Sidekick name and possibly come up with something later. So maybe you'll see a touchscreen Android-based Sidekick at some point. Who knows, but they say they are working on that. Interesting enough, as they kind of... Uh, link, the team that made the Sidekick, which was by a company at the time called Danger, was bought out by Microsoft or acquired by Microsoft in 2008, the company Danger, which was, that was the same team that created the Kin. So in one week, both their phones got, so we'll see what happens with all that, but it looks interesting. Under categories, at, under the AT&T, Apple, and iPhone, 
iPhone insurance now available but too expensive. Assurian, which I've worked with directly, is a tremendous company for insurance, is offering an iPhone insurance for the stolen, lost, stolen, and theft of phones, but is expensive, 12 bucks a month, $199 deductible. So you have to check in the in the article. It say, it explains why you, it may be too expensive. Now there is the company called Square Trade that I've talked about before that is offering a $99 for two year uh, warranty for the phone with a $50 deductible, but they don't offer anything for lost or stolen, just damaged. So if you lose your stolen, remember because if you lose your phone and you're under contract, you have to pay the full retail of $599 or $699 for the phone. You can't go back and get one for $199 or $299. Yeah, you can go on eBay or, or other places to get it, but also please remember this and always remember this, and this is true, that at least 50% of the phones on eBay are stolen. And you're going to buy a stolen phone for a certain price and then not be able to use it. So please be careful with that. Most of the phones that somebody come up to you and say they want to sell, unless it's somebody you know, will probably be stolen too. So please be careful with that. And then uh, also uh, Apple Care is offered for 69 bucks, but again, that doesn't cover for lost, stolen, or damage. That's just an extended warranty. So check out the article, and that's under Apple and iPhone um, and AT&T. Under Apple and iPhone, eBay sellers capitalize on iPhone 4 antenna problems, and basically they're selling the $29 bumpers from anywhere from 40 to 100 bucks. So again, check out the article, and you'll see buyer beware. And then under Android, Apple, and iPhone. What do iPhone buyers want? What Android users have? I know this has been addressed a number of times. There's about uh, eight or ten items on there that the Android offers that the Apple doesn't. But for those of you that are possibly contemplating taking back the iPhone 4 and getting an Android phone, this is a real little article for you guys to check out and see. Anyway, that's all I got. Um, I should put something out tomorrow. I promise. I'm un unfortunately, I'm not sure because I don't know if I'm going to be getting articles. So I hope to see you tomorrow. If not, I will see you Tuesday. Everybody have a great, great, great July 4th and July 5th because tomorrow's actually July 4th also since most of you have it as a holiday. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.